In the previous lesson, we took, we understood that worship is the pure, sincere right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, whoever directs an act of worship to other than Allah, then this person is a mushrik, a kafir, a polytheist, and a disbeliever. <laughs> And also we mentioned that we have to differentiate between making a ruling on a person and making a ruling upon the person who does the action, between the action and the person. So now we're going to study the rulings on the actions, not the people's actions. So as for making a ruling upon a person who does a particular action, then first of all, you have to remove the doubts he might have in his mind, which cause him to do that action. You have to establish the evidence against him. You have to establish the evidence which prevents him from doing that action. All of these things you have to remove before you make a ruling on a person. And then we go back to the scholars. So if the scholars then call this person disbeliever, then we say this is a disbeliever. But if the scholars, if they withhold, and they don't give a ruling, then we hit with the hole and we don't give a ruling. <coughs> and also in some actions, the scholars have mentioned that this action, whomsoever does this action is a kafir. Whoever this person is, if he does this type of action, then he becomes a kafir. For example, the scholars have mentioned that anybody who mocks al istihza who mocks or makes a mockery of the religion or an aspect of the religion, then he's a disbeliever. So the scholars have mentioned this about this action. Whomsoever mocks the religion of Islam or an aspect from the aspects of Islam, then this person is a disbeliever. So then we go back to the scholars. If they say kafir, we say kafir. If they say then no, establish the uh, evidence upon him, remove any doubts he may have, then we do this. And we also mentioned after this that a dua supplication is of two types. Dua al-ibadah and dua al-mas'ala. Dua al-ibadah, صرف لغير الله شرك أكبر كما صلى وصام وحج لغير الله. So dua al-ibadah, the first type, like praying or fasting or hajj, if somebody directs this to other than Allah, then this person disbelieves. And as for dua al-mas'ala, then it's two types. Making a request from a person or making a request for something which only Allah can do. So if you to ask somebody a person for something which only Allah can do, then it's Shirk Akbar. <laughs> and as for requesting something from a person which he has the ability to do, we say that this is correct but with four conditions. <laughs> that the person they are asking is living, <laughs> he is present, <laughs> he is able, <laughs> and that you believe that this person is only a means that Allah has placed. 
أن لهذا تصرف خفي في الكون وبيد جنب المنافع ودفع المضاعف هذا شيء أكبر. But if you in your heart you believe that this person he has control or overall control of the universe or that in his hands he owns the ability to benefit others or to harm others you know this is his sole right then this is shirk akbar مثل هذا الباب باب الاستعانة والاستعادة والاستغاثة والشفاعة على ما ذكر الشيخ بن عثيمين رحمه الله تعالى so in this same example of these same classifications these types that we've mentioned الاستعانه seeking help يعني الاستعانه من المخلوق الاستعانه بالمخلوق فيما يقدر عليه هل يصح يصح على باب الدعاء ان يكون من حي وحاضر وقادر وسبب نعم so for example seeking help or seeking refuge or seeking to be saved by somebody when you're in trouble or seeking intercession for example all of these acts somebody might say to you is it correct for you to do these acts or request them from somebody who is living and we go back to these four conditions if these four conditions are met that the person is living and present and able and that you only believe that he is a means then this is permissible so an example of this أنا أطلب من هذا الأخ أن يعينني في حمل هذه الطاولة. So for example, if I request from his brother that he helps me in picking up this table. هل يصح هذا ولا يصح؟ Is this permissible or not? نعم. حي. We look. We consider. Is he living? نعم. Yes. حاضر. Is he present? نعم موجود هنا. Yes, he's present. وليس بغاء. He's not absent. قادر. Is he able to do so? نعم إذا لا وصحة معافى. Inshallah, he's healthy as well, he's able to help. Shabab? Is he only, do we believe that he's only a mean that Allah has placed upon this earth? <coughs> yes, if he comes and he helps us, that's good. If he can't help, then somebody else can come. I is in the hands of Allah. Al istighatha. Simply with al istighatha. The meaning of istighatha is to seek rescue when you're in trouble. So for example, we have a brother who's drowning in the sea. So the brother is standing on the coast. And the one who's drowning, he calls him, save me, save me. He says, oh so and so, save me, save me. Is it, is it permissible for him to say this? Four conditions we look. Is the person present? Is the person living? Is the person able to help him? And do you believe that he's only a means on this earth? <laughs> but if a person is drowning and then he starts to call out to the Prophet <laughs> or Jibreel or Wali, a righteous person, <laughs> this is then Shirk Akbar. <laughs> So therefore the question is, is it permissible to supplicate or request or seek assistance from another created being? Who knows? Is it permissible? Is it permissible to supplicate? Is it permissible for you to supplicate or request from a created being, another person? Yes. If it's dua al-ibadah, we say shirk akbar. So if we say dua al-mas'ala in only that which Allah is able to do, shirk akbar. So therefore, the Sheikh's pointing out, you can't just say yes. You have to say yes, it's permissible <coughs> for the one who is able to help you with four conditions. <laughs> Are you allowed to do al istiana, which is seeking assistance from another created being? <laughs> is it correct? Yes or no? <laughs> if you know, behind him, yes or no? <laughs> yes, with four conditions. Allah <laughs> يصح 
We say yes, it's permissible if the person is able to help you with four conditions. Okay, if the person doesn't have the ability to help you, can you ask him or not? So now in the four conditions we mentioned, we mentioned that the fourth condition is that you have to believe that this person is only a means from Allah. He's only a means. So in terms of the people who with regret and respect with, with regards to somebody being a, an, an avenue of means or not. So there's three types of people. So there's a belief which is correct with regards to means and causes on this earth. There's a belief which is shirk asfar, a minor form of shirk. And then there is a belief which is shirk akbar, a major form of shirk. And if it's unclear, the shirk is going to make it clear. So now the correct belief with regards to things, whether they're a cause or not, whether they're an avenue to do something or not, the correct belief is that you only say something is an avenue or is a means if Allah has made it an avenue for something or a means for something. Now, So the, the, the first thing is that you only believe something to be a reason or a cause if Allah has made it a cause or reason. Either by physical means and materialistic, we know that this is a reason or a cause, or according to the Sharia. And then the second condition is that you you believe that it's a means. It's when we give an example, it becomes clear, inshallah. So, for example, this brother he becomes ill, and he has an an ailment or a pain in his stomach. So, what does he do? He starts, with, he starts reciting Surah Al-Fatiha upon his stomach. Is this correct or is this not correct? Meaning, so for example, this brother, he has an ailment or a illness in his stomach, he has pain in his stomach. So he starts reciting Surah Al-Fatiha in order for, for this ailment to be cured or go away. Is this correct or not? It's correct. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who caused Surah Al-Fatiha to be a means by which a physical uh, illness it can be removed. So therefore this brother, he has accepted or he believes something which Allah has made a, a cause to be a cause. How is this cause or this avenue of cure, is it something which is materialistic or is it something which is in the Sharia? In the Sharia because it's called Ruqya Sharia. This is from the Ruqya. Now, <laughs> or for example, the person who has this illness, he goes to a pharmacy or a place where he can get medicine, he takes some medicine and he drinks it, drinks it. And he says, in the name of Allah, may this be a cause of cure. Is this correct or not? Yes. 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 It's correct. Why? Because Allah has made this uh, cure, this medicine, a cause for his cure. But this medicine is a materialistic cause, a physical, a realistic, you know, worldly avenue for him to be cured. And therefore it's correct. 
الأسباب إما شرعية أو حسية. So therefore, <coughs> causes or avenues for something to be done can either be in the Sharia or can be physical materialistic. Sharia, كرقة الشرعية. Sharia, for example, a ruqya, reading the Quran. حسية كالدواء. Materialistic or physical life, for example, taking medicine, it's a cause for somebody to be cured. So, if he uses those avenues or those causes, whether they're materialistic or whether they're in the Sharia, and then he believes that this is only a cause that Allah has made, then this is correct. So therefore the first uh, type of belief in terms of the causes or the avenues is that he takes something as a cause which Allah has made a cause and he believes in his mind that this is only a cause. But if he now believes the cause and says that this cause in itself, in its essence, is the one that kills, or this cause in itself is the one that benefits or harms, then this is Shirk Akbar. This is a major form of Shirk. <coughs> An example of this <laughs> For example, he takes the head of a bull and he places it on top of his door. So you ask him why do you place the head of a bull on top of your house, يقول, on top of the door. He, he responds by saying that the head of the bull in itself is what repels the jinn and the shayateen. So the head of the bull is the one in itself, in its own essence, that repels the harm. So this is major form of shirk. Shirk akbar. <coughs> but let's say if he says that the head of the bull that I'm placing on top of my house, on top of the door, this is a cause or reason which Allah has made for jinn or shayatim to be repelled. <coughs> this is minor form of shirk. Shirk asfar. And one more time. If a person takes or does the causes, causes or the avenues which Allah has made as a means or a cause or an avenue, whether it's in the Sharia or materialistic, and he believes that this is only a cause, it doesn't benefit or harm itself, then this is, a, this is correct. But if he believes that this avenue or this cause or this reason or this thing in itself it harms or it benefits, then this is shirk akbar, major shirk. But if he believes that this thing it is an avenue which Allah has placed, or a means which Allah has placed, but in reality it's not a means which Allah has placed. <coughs> neither in the Sharia, and neither in a materialistic sense. Then this becomes shirk al-asqar, a minor form of shirk. <laughs> an example. <laughs> so for example, he places on his child, or his house, or his car, or anything that he, uh, he possesses, he places. For example, the, the head of a bull. Fox. The eye of a fox. Wolf. Wolf.
Nga. Aw, khair ka sauda. Oh, black. Khair ka sauda. Khair ka sauda. Aswad. Yeah, like any black type of cloth or, or a pocket or something. Oh, ba'ad al ashya. Or anything, anything. Ba'ad al ashya. Oh, shajar. Trees. Part of a tree. Aw, yaktub ala manzil or ala siyar. Or for example, a person writes on the tree, on his house, on the car, on his house. يعني يكتب على الحسود مثلاً لا تنفع ولا تسود. نعم نعم يكتب كتابات موجودة. نعم. Or he writes something on on his car, his house, something. إذا اعتقد أن هي التي تدفع فهذا شيء كتبه. So anyway, all of these things, all of these various examples, if a person believes in his own mind that these things, these examples that the Shaykh has given, they harm or they benefit themselves in their own essence, then this is Shirk Akbar, this is a major form of Shirk. But if he believes that these things that he has done, it's the means or cause which Allah has placed, then this is Shirk Asbar. It's still a form of Shirk but a minor form of Shirk. Why? Because Allah did not make these things an avenue or a cause of <coughs> harm or an evil eye being repelled. <coughs> so, so these same principles or these same conditions and categories it can be applied to a dua, supplications or requesting al isti'ana seeking assistance al istighatha seeking uh, rescue or al seeking refuge or al shifa seeking intercession. And similarly regarding how the various beliefs that people have, have regarding causes or avenues or means. We mentioned that which is correct and that which is shirk akbar and shirk asfar. So now after this, we're going to take the different ta uh, categories of al khawf fear. Al khawf yanqasim ila thalathi aqsam. Fear, al khawf, it can be divided into three types, the three categories. Al qism al awwal, the first type, khawf ibad wa ta'zim wa sir, is a type of fear which is worship, or a type of fear which involves exaltation, or a type of fear which is done in secret. Khawf ibad. So for example, the fear of worship is when you fear somebody and therefore you worship him besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fear, the khawf of ta'adim, the fear of exalting and exaltation is that you fear this person so much that you exalt him to a status which is comparable to Allah. يعني تقول لهذا مثلا لماذا لا تصلي؟ So for example you say to a person why don't you pray؟ قال أنا أخاف من صاحب القبر and he says I don't pray because I fear from the person in the grave. نعم. فلا تخافون مخافون إن كنتم مؤمنين. And Allah said فلا تخافون don't fear them rather fear me إن كنتم مؤمنين if you are truly believers. هذا القسم الأول من الخوف خوف عبادة وتعظيم والسب صرف لغير الله شرك أكبر. So this is the first type of خوف first type of fear the fear of worship the fear of تعظيم which is exaltation or the fear in secrecy and this if you do it to other than Allah if you direct it to other than Allah it is شرك أكبر. الثاني خوف طبيعي. The second type of خوف or fear is a natural form of fear natural type of fear. يخاف من النصوص. So for example, you're scared or you're fearful of a thief. من قطاع الطريق. Or for example, a highway robber. يخاف يخاف من النار. Or for example, you're scared of the fire. يخاف من السباع. أو فسود مثلاً. Or for example, you're fearful of a predator like a lion. ما حكم هذا الخوف؟ What's the ruling on this type of fear? خوف طبيعي. It's natural. جاء زلا لا علينا. It's natural, it's not something that you can blame a slave for. Now the third type of fear is that which is impermissible.
For example, showing obedience to the created to creation when there's disobedience to Allah. So this is the third type of fear, which is the fear which is impermissible. That you fear somebody so much that you obey him and instead you disobey Allah. Uh, an <coughs> example of this is so for example, a father says to his son, don't pray. It's not permissible for this son not to pray because he fears him. Because if he does this, he's given precedence to the obedience to the of the created one over obedience to Allah. Or, for example, being despondent or losing hope of the mercy of Allah. So, first, for example, a person commits a sin. And then he becomes fearful. So then a person becomes scared and fearful over the sin that he committed from shaitan. And therefore, he doesn't seek forgiveness. He's so scared of the sin that he's committed, he doesn't seek forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا. And Allah said, all my slaves, the ones who have exceeded the limits in terms of sinning, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله. Don't become despondent or don't lose hope from over the mercy of Allah. مرة أخرى. One more time. من يذكر لي الخوف؟ who can mention the three types of al-khawf? So the first type of fear, as the brother mentioned, is khawf al-ibadah. A fear in worship or exalting or in secrecy. And to direct this to other than Allah, Shaykh Akbar. The second type of the second type of fear is a natural human type of fear. And she said that this is something which is intrinsic to every human being. <laughs> and therefore, a person isn't blamed on it. <laughs> from thieves, from the fire, from bandits, from highway robbers, from a lion, for example. <laughs> the khawf or the fear which is impermissible. <laughs> And this is a type of fear which causes a person to be obedient to somebody in disobedience to Allah or to lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Therefore the question is what is the ruling of having khawf or being fearful or scared of the jinn? Whoever knows pay hands up. What's the ruling of fearing the jinn or being scared of jinn? It's a natural fear. Tabir. We ask the person, you fear, you know, why do you fear, what would you do if you fear? He says that I would recite Ayat al Kursi. I will say I will be in Kalimat al Tamat Mishari Makhala. I won't sleep alone, for example, I'll sleep with somebody there. 
So this type of fear is caused what? It's caused him to have a tawheed. I am reciting Surah al uh, Kursi. So therefore, this is the fear which is normal, human, natural. <laughs> However, if this person fears the jinn, if you said to him, look, what will you do if you fear the jinn? He says, I'll seek refuge in the jinn. Or I'll sacrifice for the jinn. Then this is khawf, which is shirk akbar. <laughs> so this is regarding al khawf. The third type. <coughs> <laughs> or the third act of worship is adhabh, sacrificing. <laughs> sacrificing adhabh, we can divide into three types. <laughs> sacrificing for the sake of Allah. <laughs> and a sacrifice which is permissible. <laughs> and then a sacrifice which is done to other than Allah in which involves <coughs> exaltation and it involves love. <laughs> so for example, sacrificing for the sake of Allah, like uh, Adha, like Eid al-Adha when he sacrificed, or Hadi in Hajj. <laughs> the permissible type of sacrificing, <laughs> as a person sacrifices some food so he can eat. <laughs> A person is a butcher, so he sacrifices the animal so he can sell it. The third type is sacrificing for other than Allah and it involves love and exaltation. Shirk Akbar. And this is Shirk Akbar, a major form of Shirk. For example, a person sacrifices for the jinn. A person sacrifices for a person in the grave. So the thing that which remains now is another, taking a vow or an oath. <laughs> taking an oath or a vow is of two types. Taking a vow by Allah and taking a vow by other than Allah. <laughs> taking a vow or an oath by other than Allah is shirk akbar, a major form of shirk. <laughs> And then after this, Al Khashya. Al Khashya is a khawf, but is a type of fear, however, this fear is built upon knowledge. Al Khawf yakum min kul ahar, wal Khashya takum min al ulama. Normal fear, Al Khawf, everybody can have this fear, this type of fear, Khawf. However, Al Khashya, this uh, fear which is built upon knowledge, only the scholars can have this type of fear. They feel this fear. As Allah said in the Quran, the only ones who have this type of fear which is built upon knowledge of Allah are the scholars, the people of knowledge. Meaning that this type of fear, al khashya is higher and more severe or higher in degree than the normal type of khawf, the normal type of fear which everybody has. So, for example, we are here now seeking knowledge. One of the reasons for which or for which we seek knowledge is so we can attain this extra type of fear, a khashya. And therefore, al khashya is fearing which is it is fear built upon knowledge and that is upon exalting the one who is feared and fearing his perfect uh, his um, perfect his, his perfect dominion or control over everything this is your level of fear I, I want a and also we come to a tawakkul reliance the sheikh has mentioned different types of worship so another form of worship is a tawakkul reliance which is a truthful type of dependence and reliance upon Allah whilst trusting Him and at the same time 
although you are relying on Allah and you trust Allah at the same time, you take the physical means and the physical avenues. So three things in tawakkul. Number one, truthfulness. Trustworthy, you trust in Allah. And then the third thing is that you, at the same time, you take the physical avenues or the means which Allah has placed on the earth. So for example, the brother wants to memorize the Quran. He says, I rely upon Allah. How do we know if he's truly relying upon Allah? We look at three things. Number one, is he truthful in his reliance or is he lying? And number two, he himself believes in absolute certainty that Allah will make easy for me the memorizing of the Quran. And it's not impossible. Surely Allah will make it easy for me. And then the, <coughs> and then the third thing is the physical means, meaning he sits down and he memorizes, he revises every single day. These are the means which Allah has placed. So the Sheikh said, I think you know, it's enough for today. We'll, um, make sure you sit with each other and you write down the different types of dua and the ruling of each dua and the ruling of al isti'an, al isti'ad, al isti'ad, and shifa. And also the different types of people in terms of the belief in the means and the avenues and the causes. I either can be a correct belief or I can be shirk akbar shirk asad. <laughs> and then um, also the different types of khawf, the khawf which is tabi'i uh, or permissible or natural to a person, and the khawf which is uh, <coughs> and the khawf which is obligatory, the khawf of worship. <laughs> and also vows and oaths, that which is for Allah and that is for which is other than Allah and the ruling of each one. <laughs> and also sacrificing for Allah. <laughs> and sacrificing for other than Allah with love and exaltation which is Shirk Akbar <laughs> and the permissible type of sacrificing <laughs> and the definition of tawakkul which is <coughs> having true dependence and reliance upon Allah <laughs> while trusting Him and also taking the avenues of the causes that Allah has placed <laughs> And we mentioned that al khashya the definition of al khashya is al khawf, a fear which is built upon knowledge, in terms of exalting Allah and also fearing uh, His complete control and dominion over everything. So inshallah, if you just write everything now in your groups like you've been doing before, and then after Isha we'll complete the rest.